So till now, we have completed four hours of our MVC training, which is approximately 240 minutes. And in these 240 minutes, you know, we have covered 11 labs. So after this stressful and definitely fruitful, I'll say, 11 sessions, you definitely deserve a rest. So let us take these uh, 10 minutes here, 10, 15 minutes of relaxation in this lab, lab 11. So in this lab, I don't expect you to do any kind of coding, any kind of demo. Just lay back and listen to this lab. And in this lab, we'll try to understand the difference between action result and view result. For past four hours of the training, you have been seeing two keywords consistently. And I'm sure that you must have got a lot of doubts around these two keywords. The one keyword which you have seen here is the action result. And the other keyword which you have seen is this view here. So if you move your mouse here, you can see the word view. Uh, but just to clarify more, this word view is nothing but view result at the end of the day. So the question here is, what are these two keywords here? One is the action result and the one is a view result. And what is the difference between action result and view result? So this video is going to clarify all the kind of doubts you have around action result and the view result keyword. So first thing, let me clarify. Both of these keywords, that is action result and view results are nothing but they are classes and they define result. If you look at MVC application, MVC application works in a request and a response manner. So the end user sends a request, must be probably from a browser or probably from a UI. And the MVC application which is running on the IIS web server sends out a response or you can say it sends out a result. So this action result and view results are nothing but that response which comes from the MVC application. So now the question is, why do we have multiple kind of result types? If you look at today's clients who connect to websites, they are of different nature. They expect different kind of formats and different kind of response types. For example, if you have a browser who connects to your site, he understands HTML format. If you have JavaScript, he understands JSON and so on. So if you see our Hello World example, which we had created uh, in the initial hours of the videos, uh, we had a load method over there. And this load method, what it does is it actually creates a customer object and displays by using the customer.chhtml but now think about that you have got, got one client who actually expects a JSON result in case you are new to JSON my suggestion is to go and watch the JavaScript JSON jQuery video series you know where we have explained JSON in more details but for now you can think about that JSON is nothing but it's a format it's a format which is used heavily by JavaScript clients so let us say now this load method is for people who connect via the browser Okay, so people who connect via the browser, they expect HTML. So what I'll do is I will go and create a separate uh, function here. And this function, I will, I will name it as load JSON. In other words, this method will actually load a JSON result. It will actually give out a JSON result. So these are for uh, clients, you know, who are uh, connecting via JavaScript and jQuery. So these are connecting via JavaScript. So here JSON is the format, right? So again, the object creation code absolutely remains same. So this is same, right? And here I will say return JSON. Okay. So return the JSON object, return JSON, return this object and uh, JSON result behavior dot allow get okay scroll below dot allow get great now the load method will give a response of html the load json will give a response of json let us quickly go and test this so let me do a control f5 here so there my site is loading so if i do like this if i say customer slash load i should see html right and if i say customer slash json so let me just go and open up in a new tab here so if i say here load json i should see json output 
So if you see here, this is HTML. If you do a view source, you can see this is all HTML. And if you go and see this, right, this is JSON. In case you are new to JSON, you know, just go and see the JSON videos. So this is JSON. So you can see now, when I call the load JSON action, he gives me JSON. When I call just the load action, he gives me HTML. But now let's pause a bit. Let's think logically. What is it at the end of the day? At the end of the day, depending on different clients, we want to send different kind of results. So for some client, we want to send HTML result. For some clients, we want to send JSON results. For some client, we want to send JavaScript results and so on. But at the end of the day, these are results. So either it is a JavaScript result, either it is a JSON result, or either it's a HTML result, it is a result. So wouldn't it be logical that we just have only one method called as load. And depending on situations, you know, he either gives a JSON result or he either gives a view result, right? So what I can do here is I don't have to write uh, different methods like this. I can do something like this. For example, I can say here, okay, depending on situations, let us say that I give a small query string out there and uh, somebody can do like this. Somebody can say, okay, request.query string. So let us say, I'll say query string is type. So if somebody gives type is equal to HTML, right, from the browser, I will send a view result or else I will send a, I will send a JSON result. So I can just say here, I can just do a control X and I can paste it here. So let me just go and delete this method from here. It's not needed now anymore. So if you see the situation now, if you see this load method, this is more better as compared to creating different kinds of methods for different kinds of results, right? So I'm saying here, okay, give me the type here. And depending on the type, either I will give you a view result or either I will give you a JSON result. And if you see all of these results, whatever it is, a view result, a JSON result, a JavaScript result, at the end of the day, it is emitted as an action result. Now let me make a statement here. Action result is a parent base class. It's a parent base class for any kind of results which comes out of MVC. And then this action result has been inherited and different kinds of results have been created like view result, JSON result, JavaScript results, etc. And now because action result is a parent base class, on runtime, this action result can point towards view result which sends out HTML. It can point towards JSON result which sends out JSON, etc. And how is it possible? How it can point? By using polymorphism. By the virtue of polymorphism, the action result can point towards any one of its base classes. In case you are new to polymorphism, my suggestion is to go and see the object of programming video section where we have explained polymorphism in more details. There we have explained both dynamic polymorphism as well as static polymorphism. So let us go and run the application here. So if I go and do here customer slash load. So if I say load HTML, it gives HTML. So if you do a page source here, just to check, it is HTML. Right. If I say load type equal to JSON, it actually displays JSON format. Right. So you can see, you know, because the action result is a base class, it can point towards any one of its child classes during runtime because of the nature of polymorphism. So we don't have to create different kinds of methods like, you know, load JSON, load HTML, etc. Right. Uh, remember the word polymorphism. Poly means many. Okay. And morph means change. So depending on situations, uh, the action result can, can change to a HTML result or it can change to a JSON result. Now, most of the time, developers only talk about action result and the view result. And that is fair, you know, because probably most of the time people see only those kind of code. But uh, strictly speaking, there are 11 different kinds of response types or result types which are created. So there are 11 different classes, you know, which, which actually inherit from the action result class. And each one of these result types give different kinds of response format. So for example, you can see here, if you just want an empty response, you can use the empty result. If you just want a file stream result, if you want to just return a file, you can use the file stream result. So actually there are 11 different kind of result types, you know, which can be sent to the client depending on situation. So let us summarize what we have learned. Action result is a base class, right? 
and view result, JSON result and all of those classes actually inherit from action result and they provide specific kind of result. And why is it architected like this? So that, you know, we can have just one method and depending on this action method, you know, we can give different kind of result types. So because of the virtue of polymorphism, we don't have to write different methods for different types.